In my previous video, we took a look at how to measure the AM modulation depth, either modulation index or modulation percentage for an AM or amplitude modulated signal using a digital oscilloscope. Now, a couple of comments that I had on that video said, well, okay, not all of us have a nice fancy digital scope, so can we make that measurement with an analog scope? And can we also do it with something other than a nice fancy uh, function generator like I've got back there? Maybe something uh, more similar to what most hobbyists might have in their lab from an RF SIGGEN. So this old Alinco uh, SIGGEN is something that uh, can typically be found for less than $100 at a ham fest. And a lot of folks will have something like that. Or even something like this little uh, tiny SA. It's got a little signal generator in it that can, measure, that can generate an AM signal. So let's go take a look at these, but not on the digital scope, but on an analog scope. So the scope I'll use in today's video is an old Tektronix 485. Um, this is similar to a lot of analog scopes that uh, you know, many amateurs may have. I do have some analog scopes that actually have uh, visible cursors you can put on the screen, but I'm not going to do that because not all analog scopes have that. So I'll show you how to make the measurement without having the benefit of those cursors. Okay, we're looking at the unmodulated sinusoidal output of the Alenco signal generator. Let me flip the internal amplitude modulation on, and we can see it bouncing up and down. But uh, if we actually want to view what that uh, is doing, uh, we're going to have to slow the time base down so we can actually see the envelope of the modulation. Uh, I'm also going to reduce the amplitude a little bit here and adjust the triggering. And if we carefully adjust the triggering, we can get a nice stable waveform of the modulated RF envelope. Well, we can see pretty clearly that the baseband signal is not entirely sinusoidal, but again, that's what you get with an inexpensive RF SIGGEN. But for doing some testing on radios and things like that, that will give you an audible tone with, uh, you know, in an AM mode, so it'll work just fine. So let's go and see how to set up and optimize to measure the modulation depth or modulation index using this scope. Now in order to make the measurements, we're going to be counting divisions or subdivisions on the screen. So to minimize error, we want to make the signal as large as we can on the screen. And that's okay, because we really don't care what the absolute voltage measurements are. We just need the relative uh, measurements of the number of divisions for the peak and the number of divisions for the trough. Now in order to make the RF peak-to-peak -peak level here um, meet the full eight divisions of the scope screen in this case, I'm going to reduce my volts per division setting. And we can see that I'm actually overdriving here now. It's scanning above and below the full eight divisions. And that's OK, because what I can then do is switch from the calibrated volts per div and pull out this knob here, which will now give me a vernier control that I can adjust the gain. And I'll just simply adjust it until I get that, uh, adjust the position here carefully, and then tweak my trigger a little bit. And if I look at this carefully, it looks like I am just hitting the full eight divisions here, just by manually adjusting the vertical you know, volts per div. And again, it's okay, because all we're looking to do is get relative counts of the number of divisions. All right, so I've got my full eight divisions for the, the peaks. All we need to do now is to look at the number of divisions that we're using for you know, trough to trough here. And it might be easier to actually adjust the horizontal position to put the trough position right at the center of the screen so I can count divisions on this uh, center axis where the minor divisions are all indicated in a heavier dash. And we can see that the troughs are occupying, let's see, this is going a full division here. Then each of these minor divisions are uh, a two-tenths of a division. So I'm going you know, two... 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and that's 0 0.6, and I could almost call that 0 0.65. So I'm going 1.65 up and 1.65 down, and that'll give me 3.3 divisions total for the trough to trough. So we can run that calculation. So we've got uh, 8 divisions for the peak to peak, 3.3 divisions for the trough. We'll subtract those. Again, hit 8 and 3.3, add those and divide them. And that tells me that my modulation index is 0.415 or 41.5%. Now another very inexpensive RF signal source that many amateurs might have is actually this tiny spectrum analyzer or tiny SA. 
this TinySA actually has uh, an RF output as well. Uh, so it's currently in the spectrum analyzer mode. But actually with the two ports here you can get a sinusoidal output out of the low port up to about 350 megahertz. And then the high port will give you a higher frequency output but it's a square wave. So we'll focus on the low output port here. So to configure the TinySA to give us the RF output here, I will uh, touch the display, go into mode, and we're currently in the uh, low in as a spectrum analyzer input, but we'll switch it to low out. That'll give me an RF output on that low port. I'll turn the RF output on, and now it's on. We can actually see the RF envelope of that here. If we zoom way in on this, let me get the triggering set up right here. We can actually see the sinusoidal output, in this case at 10 megahertz, minus 15 dBm, onto the screen. Now there is a setting to get, turn on modulation. So we'll go to modulation, and instead of selecting none, let's set AM. And that's currently doing a 1 kilohertz amplitude modulation. And uh, so if we look at the scope, and we zoom scroll back down here to a slower sweep speed, adjust our trigger. Now I can actually see the amplitude modulated signal. Now it's also clear that this very inexpensive RF signal source is actually generating the amplitude modulation by simply stepping the output attenuator of that RF signal source. So it's simulating a sinusoidal modulation, but you know, again, we can still measure the modulation percentage in the same way. Again, using the vernier control on the vertical scale, I can set the peak-to-peak -peak values. Let me adjust my trigger level to get a kind of unghosted output here. Set that signal level so that it is just going true peak-to-peak -peak on the full eight divisions here. And moving my horizontal over, I can position the troughs at that center graticle and count divisions there. If we look at this, I can see that I'm about uh, one full division, and then 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and that looks like that's about 0.7. Okay, so that's going to be you know 1.7 divisions up, 1.7 divisions down, 3.4 divisions total out of eight. So now we have eight minus 3.4, and then we can do eight plus 3.4 and divide those. And again, very close to the other one since we were at 3.4 divisions instead of 3.3. Uh, 0.403 modulation index or modulation percentage of 40.3%. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to set up your analog scope to measure AM modulation depth. And again, it really just involves carefully setting the trigger level to trigger on the just at the positive peak of the modulated RF envelope. In this case, I'm using internal triggering. I'm using AC coupling, but DC coupling would work just as well, and just carefully adjusting that. Uh, in some cases, you may have a trigger hold-off that you might want to play with to kind of uh, remove any of the jitter if you've got some kind of jitter in the result. And then all, and secondly, adjusting the vertical scale using the calibrated volts per division to overdrive slightly and then jump into the uncalibrated mode to adjust the gain down to have the display, the peak to peak of the display, fill the you know, full graticle that you have. That will minimize the number of the error that you'll have when you're actually counting divisions for the trough. So then doing the math just by using the divisions measurement will give you an accurate amplitude modulation depth or modulation percentage. Thanks again, as always, for watching. Thanks for the great comments on the previous video. If you haven't seen that one, uh, take a look at the link that I'll include in the description of this video down below and take a look at making the same measurements on a digital scope. Thanks again, as always, for watching, and we'll see you next time.